Now you see, while I'm happy they gave us a Forbidden and Limited list, I am kind of heated that they made it go into effect and be revealed to us literally seven days before the 200th YCSs, where literally no regionals count for testing. Uh, you have seven days to prepare for the event without factoring in travel and accommodations and stuff like that into things that are going to eat up your time. <sighs> a little, more than a little upset. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video we're going to be doing a ban list discussion video because a ban list has dropped, or rather a forbidden and limited list has dropped on us on September 13th, 2018. It goes into effect September 17th, 2018, which is literally this coming Monday, which means that it will be in effect for the 200th YCSs. It is literally going to be the first event where this ban list is legal, in fact. There's not going to be any regionals or anything as far as, like, you know, sanctioned larger scale tournaments until the 200th. So the 200th is going to be a largely unexplored format in terms of how this list is basically presented and forms the metagame around itself, essentially. But, basically, we're going to be going over this list. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on certain things and stuff like that. And basically, that's how this is going to go. Typical ban list discussion type video, you know? Uh, it's not one of those things that I try to rush because I feel like it's just better if I actually articulate my thought processes around for a little bit. So anyway, first card that is banned is Samsara Lotus. Now, this card is basically another one of those cards that is dying for... Aroma Seraphy Jasmine's Sins. Basically, this is a preemptive hit because there is, again, like a lot, uh, as a lot of plant things tend to go, there's a lot of like infinite loops that you can perform with some of the better plant cards, and this is definitely one of them, especially with the, you know, cards like Ar Aroma Seraphy Jasmine possibly coming to us on the horizon. This card being hit makes me think more and more that we're going to be getting that card sooner rather than later possibly is an OCG import in the next set because like it's another plant card that's dying specifically because it's an FTK enabled by the plant support specifically like Jasmine making it more consistent and stuff like that uh, so like there's basically some infinite loop where you like burn your opponent game one uh, turn one with Samsara Lotus constantly reviving itself in the end phase and then doing something to burn um, I think there's a couple different ways it's done I'm not super super sure on the details I just know that it was a thing, and I just kind of got disgusted by it and didn't really look into it. Uh, but basically, that's basically just a preemptive hit. It's another plant card dying for Aroma Seraphy Jasmine's sins, as I've said. Next card that is forbidden is the first Link monster to ever be banned, Nightmare Goblin. This card is definitely not okay uh, for any, any like, sort of approaching it. Like, any way you could approach... Nightmare Goblin as a card looking at it design wise it was definitely very above and beyond like clear that it was one of the more unfair Nightmare monsters the blanket protection from targeting is actually pretty huge Phoenix and Goblin by itself was sort of its own little soft lock where you were almost guaranteed to get extra turns out of them because Cerberus's protection is good don't get me wrong but it's not really super important whereas Goblin was definitely the better protection effect to have when paired with a card like Nightmare Phoenix giving you battle protection as well uh, because, like, it just invalidates so many cards in the game that can out your cards. And then on top of that, getting an additional normal summon in an easily accessible monster from your extra deck that doesn't really require you to do anything, uh, like, extravagant with it, other than just make sure it's in the main monster zone so you can summon to one of its arrows that it's pointing to. It's not really that big of a, of a surprise that this card would have been gone eventually. Uh, it's definitely gone a lot sooner than I thought it would be, but I definitely wanted this card gone uh, because of its protection effect and because, like, if you're going to be playing a card that grants you an additional normal summon, you need to be either playing a card like Brilliant Fusion that has some sort of drawback or be playing something that's super archetype specific like Imduk or uh, Ritual Beast Tamer Elder or something like that. Whereas Goblin is just literally any deck that can make two monsters and put this card on the field has access to an additional normal summon at some point in time at the cost of a card in your hand, but not really a cost because if it's co-linked, you could just draw a free card instead. So it was always one of those cards that pretty much had a target on its head from a lot of the more uh, intellectual players in the game. We've wanted this card gone for a while. Next card banned, MX Saber Invoker. This card has enabled like seven different decks to be good and none of which have been X Sabers. This card came out as X Saber support in uh, Order of Chaos, I believe it was, was its original printing. And it's been used in Zodiacs, it's been used in tons of FTK strategies to get Amazonas Archer, it's been used in Goki, it's been used in Madoche, it's been used in, um, in just so many other wind-ups when uh, Zen Mighty got banned, you replaced it with Invoker. There's like a solid 
handful of decks that this card has just enabled and carried to make it better than it actually is. The the Light Sworn variants using the Predator Plants to go into a Brilliant Fusion Mrs. Radiant combo. Like all these different things. Like Emmet Saber Invoker has just been an enabler for so many different decks that aren't X Sabers, and it's constantly been something that's been an issue, like whether it's been FTK decks, or whether it's been decks like Zodiac, where it definitely was not really the intended purpose. Um, it's one of those cards that like could have easily gone a long time ago, and it's very interesting that it's been hit now, especially considering that like it's you know an enabler of the level 3 Goki variant. So it's definitely one of those hits to Gokis that the, the list kind of definitely needed to have. We definitely need a Goki to kind of go away, at least a little bit, and so Goblin getting hit and MX Saber Invoker getting hit is definitely like two pretty big hits to the Goki extra deck. It still has a lot of combos that it has at its disposal, uh, but it's going to be a lot harder for it to do a lot of the bigger combos as resiliently as it was doing before. And then Invoker is obviously a consistency hit to the level 3 Goki variant. But moving on to the limited cards, we have A Assault Core Limited. Uh, this may seem random to those that aren't, you know, familiar with it, but there is an ABC FTK where you have Cannon Soldier and Firewall out, and you are just using Cannon Soldier to tribute one A from your field, and that A triggers targeting another A from your grave to add it back, and that's an infinite loop to keep specialing it with Firewall. Uh, it could have been solved by getting rid of Firewall or Cannon Soldier, but for, for some reason, Konami decided to get rid of A Assault Core and limit it. Uh kind of strange uh, in terms of an option because Cannon Soldier is still running around uh, and obviously Firewall is still running around because it wasn't in the Forbidden section. Uh, so it's it's very strange that this is the approach that they took, uh, at least to me. I don't know if I would have done the same thing if I was the one like designing this list. I definitely feel like Cannon Soldier and Toon Cannon Soldier and then possibly Firewall Dragon, at least with an errata, would have been like more permanent fixes to this sort of problem because there's definitely some other deck in the future that could easily abuse Cannon Soldier or Amazonas Archer for infinite burn damage turn one. I don't know. I just think it's I think it's a little bit too like strange of a hit. You've like basically hit ABC super hard when it didn't even really need to be hit that hard if you just remove the burn cards from the game anyway. It's not even really that big of an issue because you're what's your what are you gonna do? Like use infinite A's for link materials. You're gonna run out of extra deck cards before you do anything super of note with that. Uh, it, or at least you're gonna like blow through your extra deck. Uh, there's definitely options there, but at least that could have been you know dealt with in different ways. I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm just kind of on the fence about it. But one of the biggest changes to this list is that Elemental Hero Stratos, the boy is finally free. Five years later, this card got banned in September 2013, the very first ban list where the TCG separated its ban list from the OCG. This card was forbidden. Five years later, it's finally back to one. Will it matter in the grand scheme of the format? Probably not that much. Heroes will definitely be like a decent roguish pick deck. I don't think it'll be anything near tier one with like, you know, Dark Law or with three malicious um, doing like link spammy things. There's definitely some lists in the OCG that look really interesting with like double Stratos where they have two Stratos there. Um, that look like uh, basically like Airblade Turbo, but modernized with links because of Isold and stuff. Uh, but I don't think it will be doing that much here. Uh, the deck just seems like it has not enough like going for it in the grand scheme of things. Uh, whereas like the Stratos is basically fine coming back because of those reasons. And then there were other things that you know sort of balance this out as well. Uh, Morphing Jar coming back. This card basically doesn't matter. It didn't even matter when it got banned. It was banned because of Jackpot Seven, which. When Jackpot 7 was released to us, they banned Morphing Jar and Morphing Jar number 2, even though it's a gimmicky FTK where you literally just printed this card to be, like, an alternate win condition that we didn't even want. And so, like, I don't know. Morphing Jar just, it won't have any effect on the game, uh, basically. The game is way too fast for it to be a thing. Now, second limited Link monster in the game, Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Very interesting. Pendulum hasn't been doing a lot this past format. Uh, but I can understand them wanting to go ahead and like nip the Pendulum problem in the bud, potentially, if there's going to be more Pendulum cards that come out in the future. As long as Electromite is at 3, there is a potential problem there with Electromite just constantly abusing like just Chronographs or other engines, engine Pendulum cards to like uh, spam cards onto the field and then make 3 Electromites and do stuff like that. Uh, there's definitely like potential in the future because Pendulums as a mechanic has always been really scary in terms of a design aspect. 
Um, it's very volatile. Any card that's just kind of okay immediately like tips the uh, tips the scale into the broken category if it's a pendulum monster just because of the nature of how the mechanic works. Uh, so it's one of those things that this seems like more of a preemptive hit than anything because, I mean, yeah, Pendulum's got second place at our Nationals, but, like, if you watch Walter Jewell's plays, he was only ever making one Electromite anyway, so it's not even like this affects directly that deck. Um, and the Spam 3 Electromite Pendulum deck hasn't really had a huge amount of success in the previous format. I don't know. Just seems kind of... Uh, Kind of uh, like a, just a preemptive measure for possible future Pendulum cards breaking the card wide open again. Now, Cypher and Lord Omega has gone from 3 to 1. This card uh, is pretty much on this list because of Junk Speeder. <laughs> if we're being real, this card has been like the subject of a lot of uh, hand loopy decks over the past three years since the card was printed. Uh, but basically, now it's a bit more consistent to do that now than ever because of Junk Speeder being released in the Yusei Tens. This is very much why this card is here. Uh, junk Speeder decks just make this card a little bit too broken, especially considering you factor in Power Tool Dragon and Different Dimension Reincarnation into the mix. Stuff like that. Now, another card that's come off the ban list, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. This card was never banned in the OCG. Didn't really cause too much of a problem. It was banned in the TCG in November of 2015 on that ban list. It was sort of banned pretty obviously to like promote pendulum summoning because we were getting more of the better pendulum cards a lot slower than the OCG was and so if Exitana had existed at that time then we definitely would have had like issues of pendulums taking off uh, with like the first wave of magician support and stuff like that because it just would have been a little bit too slow uh, and Exiton would have been a bit more of a factor in that sort of a format uh, but now it's back it's back. It was uh, reprinted literally 2017 Nats Battle of Legend. So we thought it was going to get unbanned then. Now it's being unbanned a full year and like two months later. Uh, sorry, my contact is moving around in my eyes. So it's being very, uh, very uh, difficult to uh, keep my eyes open because they are twitching. But Exiton, as of right now, I don't think the card is going to do much in the upcoming format. Uh, it's definitely a card that will do something in the future just because of the nature of how the card operates. Uh, but as of right now, none of the like meta decks are super like uh, capable of putting two level fours on the field at the drop of a hat before doing any major play investment. Um, until we get another deck like that, Exiton's probably not gonna do much. Um, but like like I said, like you have like Sky Striker, Goki, Altergeist, Trick Stars, and stuff like that. And those decks, as of right now, do not put two level fours out on demand. It's not like the core function of how the decks operate. Uh, so this card will do something in the future. Uh, it'll basically just be, you know, a good board wipe that good players will respect and that bad players will lose to and get mad uh, because they didn't play around it. Uh, but other than that, like, it's just a card that sort of, like, equalizes board states and formats of it. So I'm okay with it being back. I actually really like Exiton Knight as far as the design uh, of the card. A Hero Lives is at one. This is obviously because Stratos. Uh, Konami is scared of what giving Stratos back to us and leaving a Hero Lives at 3 could do to the game. Uh, rightfully so, freely special summoning Stratos from your deck has always been pretty powerful. Uh, card Destruction, what's forbidden is now limited. This is very obviously to push danger. Uh, basically, there's the, the archetype that Konami's trying to print and to push on us as, a, as the next big powerful TCG exclusive archetype. Card Destruction obviously works very well on that deck. We're getting three more waves of support for that deck. Seems pretty obvious, right? Card Destruction was never banned in the OCG. Never really was a huge factor or a huge problem of subsequent formats. It probably won't do anything major for us until the second wave of danger support comes out. And if that wave of danger support is good, then card destruction might be decent. As of right now, it's good in like danger fabled, maybe BA, danger BA, danger dark world, stuff like that. It's obviously another good card. Uh, it's like a blowout card in those decks right now. But basically, uh, it's not really going to do much until those decks themselves get inherently a bit better. But continuing down the list, Sky Striker Mecha Hornet Drones. Uh, this is a hit that is definitely necessary. It hits Goki and Sky Striker in the same way. Uh, removing a, uh, a token generator is obviously really good. Uh, one of the biggest things that I don't like about this hit, though, is that you don't really curb the consistency of the deck nearly that much, at least with how pure Sky Striker is oriented. And the same thing with like Sky Striker Goki. The card went from 6 to 4, essentially, because Engage is still at 3. Now, what it does do is it turns it into a Garnet, essentially, if you were going to play it in Goki and play a 3 Engage and 1 Hornet Drone, but you could obviously just change this up by just 
playing another Sky Striker card, like something like Eagle Booster, which essentially functions like a Called by the Grave. Uh, like it's a good card against hand traps because you can just—it's a quick play spell that makes a monster uh, unaffected by other uh, other card effects as long as it's on the field or some something like that. Like you could easily mitigate that sort of Garnety aspect of Hornet drones. Uh, it definitely was a card that needed to be addressed because it's you know a searchable card that gives you a free special summon that goes into a card that immediately adds a card back. Obviously, it had to be addressed in some way, shape, or form. At least that entire sort of play sequencing. I still feel like Engage was probably the better hit though. Like. Uh, hurting the consistency of the deck rather than hurting the options that you could search with engage uh, seems like a, like a better overall move personally but super poly was forbidden is now legal again this will probably not be that huge of a factor super poly has been at three in the OCG for a long ass time and they have construct and a lot but a lot, a lot more fusions than we have essentially that are good um, for super polying into uh, they've had Stratos for ages. Uh, Super Poly will probably just, like, do nothing here. Now, you have the potential of getting, like, Super Poly into, like, Mud Dragon of the Swamp as a defensive play. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> or, like, Cyber's Clock Dragon clearing U-boards with, like, uh, Clock Wyvern and stuff when Cyber gets anything that allows the deck to be good. Uh, there's, there's definitely some potential there for the card to be used, but it's not really going to be format-defining. So, not really much to talk about there in the limited section because, like, the most exciting things on the list is Stratos and Exiton Knight coming back, essentially. Uh, and those cards aren't really going to affect a huge amount uh, in the format, at least in my opinion. I may not know some secret hero goo, and Heroes is a deck that spams level 4s, which means it will inherently make Exiton really good. I may just not know, but as from what I've seen so far with like the hero list I've been seeing people play, not really that big of a thing that I'm worried about. But anyway, to the semi-limits, let's do this quick. Cosmo Dark Destroyer from 1 to 2. Probably won't affect much. It'll be fun to play uh, Cosmos again on a little bit more of a casual level, though. Uh, Called by the Grave from 3 to 2. I don't really like this hit because hand traps are really you know essential in the format. This is sort of a Goki hit, kind of, because now hand traps are a lot more uh, you know good against that deck because the deck is less resilient with the loss of Invoker and Goblin. And a Hornet drone. Uh, two Hornet drones, in fact. Uh, but basically, Called by the Grave counters hand traps, and now that you have less of that, hand traps are going to hurt more which means that hand traps are going to basically be a bit more of a dominating factor in, upcom in the upcoming format, at least in my thoughts. Uh, and basically, if Konami got tired of people seeing people's deck lists play 3 Call by the Grave all the time, then they could just try to balance their game and make it to where hand traps aren't even good. And then Call by the Grave would naturally rotate itself out. Uh, but whatever. Limiter removal goes from 1 to 2. This will probably not matter. Uh, Cyber Dragons can play it. Uh, you could be cheeky and play it in Pure Sky Striker, attack directly with, Hi with Hayate for 15, play double limiter, ooh, 6k damage. Uh, probably won't be relevant though. Scapegoat from 3 to 2, uh, seems like it'll do largely very little except hurt the consistency of seeing a card like Scapegoat that already takes 3 turns to set up. Uh, it seems like we're really past the point of Scapegoat being like a hugely defining card in the format and index like we were literally like this time last year where Trickstar is like their win condition with Scapegoat and stuff. Now they have Sky Striker cards and stuff. It's obviously still a good card, but it's not like as bad of an issue as it was. Extra deck space is getting really tight with newer Link monsters. And Terraforming has gone from 3 to 2. This is definitely something that sort of needs to start happening on the list. Field spells are getting really powerful for no apparent reason other than just why not. So uh, hitting Terraforming, uh, I'm surprised it went to 2 and not just like straight to 1. Uh, but it's it's definitely a step in the right direction. Field spells are getting way too powerful. They're basically like more consistent, continuous spells uh, or can more consistent searchers at this point in time. And then cards that are at three and off the list are Apocryphal Towers. Still doesn't matter. Cleefort sucks. Destiny Hero Disc Commander got its errata. Not really that playable. Not really that good. You could probably try something with it. Burial from a different dimension didn't do anything at two. Probably won't do anything at three. And Ring of Destruction. Its errata makes this card basically not a factor and also like. Uh, it's not even that good of a card for time. It's not a good that it's not that good of a card for like in general because of its errata. Because you take the damage, then your opponent takes the damage. You're not allowed to target monsters. You're not allowed to kill your opponent with it, but you can kill yourself with it. Uh, overall, the card just doesn't seem to matter anymore. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this Forbidden Limited list. Sorry, I was a bit wordy, but I wanted to explain my thought processes. If that's what you're even here for, if that's what you even like. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you made it this far into the video, give me a hashtag 200th YCS. 
in the comments down below because this is the list that's going to be played at the 200th YCS, which I will be attending, and I've got to figure out how I'm going to be playing any deck that I'm going to be playing for that event in the next seven days. Thanks, Konami. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as always. Subscribe if you're new here and haven't already and want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.